What's up everyone, it's Alex. Thanks for joining me on the channel here for this video. As you can tell from the title, I have a clogged sunroof drain. I'm ha I've had it for a while, um, in the G37 that is, and we've been getting some heavy rains here in Florida during the summer, and it's just been getting worse and worse. So this is a fairly easy process to take apart kind of the upper portion of the paneling and dash, not so much the dash, but the one vent there on the side. Um, I definitely recommend this instead of taking it to a dealership. Um, they charge quite a bit of money in labor to get to this piece, um, and it's fairly simple if you take your time. So without further ado, let's get started on this project and get this clock drain taken care of. All right, so we're in the passenger side of the car. I actually had this towel there for a recent rain trying to soak up whatever water was in there. Um, this vent needs to come out and then along with this this little A-pillar trim here and then this side piece. So I'm going to start by removing or at least taking down a little bit of this rubber seal here that goes along the upper part of the door and then you'll be able to get your hand back in here and pull this panel off. Mine's a little dirty to begin with but make sure you're Hands are kind of clean, obviously this is tan compared to the black, so it'll get dirty real easily. So if you see there, there's one clip here that just pops out back there. Then there's this funky little green clip that goes in here. I just took a pair of pliers up over here and kind of just twisted it and pulled it out that way. Then you just pretty much pull this piece up and out and set it aside. Also when you pull that upper clip off, the metal part may stay in the car, so just grab your pliers and pull that piece out. Just throw it back on here and it's good to go. So now you can see the stuff that's running down the side of the car. This is the actual sunroof drain and that's what's clogged back down here behind the dash um, where it connects to the firewall. So now you can kind of start to see what's going on, where that's going. So this piece has some clips behind it that aren't very st strong, so you just take a corner and you can pretty much just start pulling that away and it pops right off. Now we'll take this screw out so that this vent piece can come out and we're doing all this just so we can get as much access as we can to get back there and fix this problem. And then once that's out, this vent piece just pulls free like that. So it's very, very hard to see, but if you follow this drain um, hose down, you can see where it connects to the firewall. See that little yellow round piece in there? That's where our leak is coming from. Um, so like I said, all this stuff is removed. I'm not even sure if I have to remove all this lower stuff since it's up top in here. Definitely going to need some longer needle nose pliers to get to this over here uh, so that we can pull this thing off and see what's going on in there. All right, so I was able to just pull, push my hand back in here over the um, AC vent and pull the hose free. A lot of dirt, you know, kind of came out once I pulled this free. So <clears throat> I took this AC vent here and I kind of wedged this down underneath the dash. And again, it's very, very hard to see. It's down in there, but now I have some extra room to get down in there with a uh, needle nose pliers and pull that free. It's just past the, there you go, you can kind of see it there. And that's what I'm going to pull out and check that out. So here it is, here's the piece where that hose connects to. This goes into the firewall and then this will drain all the water out. As you can see here, it's very, very dirty. There's that little baffle in there. That looks like it has gotten clogged. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean all this up. You can see where it kind of spills out on the sides and it's gotten this gasket, you know, all messed up down here. In a perfect world, I'd want to probably go to Infinity and get a new piece here, but it's Sunday right now, so um, nothing's open. So I'm just going to try and clean this up the best I can, shove it back in there, and hopefully that will solve the problem. All right, so we got a cleaned up drain here. As you, as I mentioned before, there's this baffle inside, and it seemed like mine was pretty well clogged up and caked on with nasty stuff underneath here. So again, that was causing everything to kind of just overflow over to the sides. So got a little bottle brush down in there, cleaned up the best I could. Everything looks pretty decent now. So now, just have to take this. It's oriented up, it's got the arrow for up. So it has to go back in just like that. 
Um, the way I got it back, or got it out, was like I said, I pressed this down um, to give me some room underneath here. Then I was able to take my needle nose pliers, grab at the corner of this and just yank it out. So hopefully I can do that in reverse, push it through, make sure it goes into the firewall and doesn't fall down in there. So wish me luck, I'm gonna try and do that now. So pushing it back there with the pliers didn't really work. So what I'm gonna try and do now is just put it on the hose here and then can I use this to fish it back into here and then somehow just get it to pop in. Like I said, you have to make sure it's straight that the arrows are facing up um, there's these clips that go into the firewall so hopefully i can wiggle it around a little bit and get it to uh, seat right in there so in the meantime i decided to take the rest of this apart took the glove box out it's not needed to get the um actual drain back in but i just wanted to pull this up and see what happened under here how wet it is and as you can tell or hopefully you can tell on the camera it's soaking wet under here still um, there's actually some water down in here, so I'm just going to pull this all up, dry it off the best I can, because honestly, this is not good. This foam is soaked, so it could, you know, gets mildew in there, it starts to smell, and then obviously you have a bunch of wires here, so it could cause, you know, electrical shorts. So there's a lot of problems that could be caused by this leak, or I should say this clogged, um, sunroof drain. So if you notice it, best thing to do is to fix it as soon as possible. I waited a little bit, but as you can see, um, actually let me pull this piece out. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of water under there. So, like I said, it's not necessary to pull all this stuff apart to get the drain hooked back up, but I wanted to pull this apart and really clean it up good and get as much water out of here as possible. All right, so I got this dried up as much as I can, but really everything is pretty soaking wet. All this foam, sound deadening, that's all really wet. Um, we just got a bunch of rain here and this car sits outside. So I think I'm just gonna leave this, you know, up out of the way. Um, try and park it in the garage tonight maybe and just let it all air dry before I put it back together because, you know, once everything is together, um, less of a chance of it drying or drying properly. So, <clears throat> like I said, all of this is pretty much soaking wet. Um, wish I'd taken care of this a little bit sooner, but in any event, gonna let it air dry and then we'll put it back together tomorrow and hopefully this will be taken care of. Another thing to mention before I finished up last night, I actually was able to get this back installed. I found that the best way was to have it hooked up to the hose, feed it back there and then kind of use a long um, screwdriver to kind of gently position it in there and then I was able to stick my hand in there and push it all the way on again it's a tricky it's tricky to do there's very much limited space in there um, you know it just takes a little bit of time and it's a little bit annoying so after I did that I did run some water up on the outside here over on the sunroof and yet again I still had a leak under the dash so pulled this piece out again and if you remember where I showed you in a previous clip this had a little baffle I guess you could call it at the end well, there was another piece of junk, of dirt, whatever you want to call it. It almost looked like a rock, almost completely blocking the passageway. So I decided to take the chance and cut out that baffle so that in the future, if anything else does come in here, it won't get clogged. It'll just go flow right out, you know, out of the car through the firewall. So now I'm going to go put this back in again. Um, you know, spray some water over the top and hopefully it doesn't leak. All right, well, it's back in. The drain is affixed into the firewall. The tube or hose is hooked up. Uh, if you can see on the windshield there, I just tested the, or I ran some water over the sunroof. And finally, there is no leak. There's no water coming from anywhere, um, no drips. I'm really happy to, uh, to report that finally. So looks like cutting out that little baffle helped and uh, you know just making sure it's tight against the firewall. Now I'm just going to put all this carpet and stuff back in reverse order, get it all situated, and put this thing back together. All right, so I know I didn't tell you how to take the glove box out. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, there's these clips on the bottom here, and they literally just slide into here. So to pull it out, you pull from the bottom, those unclip, then you have your little end pieces here, that are inside so if you kind of shift the box to one side you can angle it out and then disconnect this little lever here 
this is the thing that keeps it from that slows it down when you open it so that connects onto the side there so pop that off and it comes out and then putting it back is in reverse order so it kind of angle it back in on one side then the other clip it on the bottom or first obviously hook that up but then angle it in on the side the other side and then pop it in on the bottom then this last piece on the bottom literally these just get slid in to the spots in the back so literally just slide it back and up and these three clips up there clip back in so now this vent just slides back in here just be careful to line it up it's all lined up on the side you can put your screw in that piece is done then we'll put this last piece of trim and actually on the side and then I think we'll be done alright so everything is back together all the trim pieces all the rubber sealing is all back together good as new all in all this project was very easy um, if you just take your time and just make sure that you take everything apart piece by piece kind of like Legos it all just comes apart and fits back together pretty easily just have to be careful and remember where everything goes uh, definitely an easy project and uh, definitely will save you a lot of money so thanks a lot for checking out the video this is a project that I think most people can do with some simple tools like I said you only really need a long pair of needle nose and a long screwdriver just to help with removing stuff um, this just takes a little bit of time. If it's your first time doing something like this, just you know, take a few minutes, make sure you set aside some time, and just go piece by piece. It's really, really easy, honestly, I think, um, and it will save you a lot of money at the dealership. I've heard anywhere from four to $800 that they charge you to take that apart and get to that piece. And honestly, I can tell you firsthand from just doing it, it is not worth it. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I hope it helped you in correcting your problem. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and it helped, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. I do really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please drop them below and I'll be sure to answer. So thanks again for watching. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Good luck on this project, and I'll see you next time.